The lady has good reason to scream. An intruder has broken into our home and made a deliberate attempt to end her life. Is this child's rubber ball just a prop to seal the broken glass? Or does it have a deeper symbolic meaning? Well, the answers to that question and many others are contained in the Merriweather file. That's the name of our story, based on the exciting novel by Lionel White. Our leading players are Mr. James Gregory, Miss Bethel Leslie, Mr. Edward Binns, and Mr. Ross Elliott. As sure as my name is Boris Karloff, this story will lead you through a most fascinating labyrinth of terror. And if you find your way out, well, that's more than I can promise for Anne and Charles Merriweather in the ensuing thriller. <laughs> to get in, huh? What's, what's the rubber ball? That was Billy's. That, that, was, that was my little boy's. We just keep it around to remember him. Did you hear anything, Ann? The, the cat was in... He was sleeping somewhere. I, I suppose the gas fumes got her excited and she must have knocked that tray over. That, that's what woke me. Mm -hmm. Who? Who would want to? Oh. I, I've never hurt anybody. I mean... All right, all right. Come on, let's, let's get out of here. Go into the living room. Give it a chance to air out. Sit here, huh? When will Charles be back? Tomorrow morning. Just for one day, though. It's our anniversary. He goes back on the road the next day. Huh. Who are you calling? Police, of course. Howard, please don't. Someone just tried to kill you. If you call him, Charles would find out. Well, of course he will. I'd... I don't want him to know. Man, he's your husband. He's got to know. Things haven't been going very well for him at work, Howard. That's why he has to go on these selling trips. I, I, I don't want to add to his worries. Your life is being threatened, Anne. That's more important than any business worries. Please, Howard. Please do as I want. And. What is it, really? I'm your friend, Anne. Since we've been neighbors, you and Charles have become my closest friends. You've both come to me for help and advice. Not as a lawyer, as a friend. And don't you know you can trust me? This isn't the first time that's happened, Howard. It happened once before. Someone tried to kill you before? Yes, and in the same way, it was three years ago, just after my little boy, just after Billy was killed. Don't think about that. Except then, Charles and I knew who was trying to kill me. Who? Me. It was I, myself. Sorry, Anne. I... No one knew about it except Charles and me. At the time, I was half out of my mind with 
grief and guilt. Why should you be guilty? Billy was supposed to be in the house taking a nap. You backed the car out of the garage. Supposed to be. The fact was he wasn't, and I killed him. I wanted to die. I wanted to die so much. You mean the same thing happened again here tonight? No, believe me, I had nothing to do with tonight. But will Charles believe me? He found out he'd quit his job, stay home, take care of me. You know how stubborn he is. Might be better if he were to spend more time at home. Oh, if he loses his job, I don't know what'll happen to him. He's had too many disappointments. He's pride and his confidence in himself are beginning to go. That's frightening to watch happen. Charles is a very lucky man, Anne. Any man would be lucky to have a wife like you. Don't tell him, Howard. Don't tell anybody. I can lean on you if I have to. And do you have a gun in the house? Yes, Charles is hunting things. Good. And, uh, ask Charles to get your dog. You know, an anniversary present, a watchdog. Tell him it's lonely with him away so much of the time, and the dog would be companionship for it. All right. You're very dear to us, Howard. Very dear. And very comforting. Good night. Mr. Yates. You know anything pressing at the office? Yeah. No, well, Mr. Conroy can handle that. Anything else? Uh-huh. No, I, uh, I just been delayed. I'll, I'll be there very shortly, Florence. Mm-hmm. Oh, Florence, uh, no, just a second. Uh... I'd like you to have some uh, flowers sent for me, huh? Mm, roses, I think, red, long stem. Yes, to Mrs. Charles Merriweather. You know the address. No, 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 no. Just, uh, just my card and say uh, happy anniversary. Oh! <laughs> oh, Charles, you gave me such shame on you. I just drove up. What you doing? One of the panes broke. I was just puttying in a new one. Oh, good girl. Just for that, you can have this. Aha! Uh -huh. Kiss first. Oh, thank you. Come on, boy. Come on. Top of the chair. Come on. You stay there. Lie down. <laughs> good boy. He's lovely, Charles. Thank you. Oh, I wish I didn't have to go on the road so often. So do I. I know it's hard on you. I'll quit the job if you want me to. It's not panning out. Honey, no, I'm all right. Now, will you go on with the club, have a nice evening? This was supposed to be our evening. What kind of an evening would it be? Me with my usual terrible headache and you sitting around doing nothing? Look, I didn't buy you an anniversary present, so this is it. Now, go on. Go on to the club and have a good time. You promised Dave you'd play cards with him and the others later. I still don't feel right about it. Oh, don't be silly. Not, not, give me my sleeping pills. They're over there, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Will you go on and get out of here? Okay. Wake me up before you go in the morning. Seven o'clock? I'll be up. Yeah. I think I'll put this in the card trunk tonight. Save time in the morning. All right. Have a good time, dear. Night, honey.
trouble, buddy. I got a flat. No spare? Yeah, but I can't get into my trunk. Lost your key, huh? Well, I had it last night when I put my suitcase in there, and I can't find it. Well, there's a garage about a mile down the road, and I'll send somebody back. Thanks. I lost my trunk key. <laughs> well, at least it'll work. Good. I'm surprised how often this happens. I've had to collect practically a whole hardware store full of keys. It's usually the last one. I don't know how he got into my car trunk. Now, you gotta believe that. Huh? What do you mean, uh-huh? Oh, please, please don't lose your temper. Oh, why shouldn't I lose my temper? I tell them the truth. Instead of trying to find out who is behind this, they keep me here asking the same questions over and over again. Charles, Charles, Anne is right. Now, calm down. This is all just some nightmarish mistake. Excuse me. Uh, we've had some photos made of the victim's face. Now, it won't be a very pleasant sight for you, Mrs. Merriweather, but it would be a big help to us if you could just take a look at them. Now, do you have to drag my wife into this? Then it must, Mrs. Merriweather, yes, be subjected. I'm afraid so. You see, we have a hunch that the victim was killed somewhere near your house, Mrs. Merriweather, and if you could just take a look at the photographs, you might be able to identify him as someone who'd been hanging around your neighborhood or your house. Might just help if you did it. All right, anything. Anything to clear this up. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Yates, as the next-door neighbor, perhaps you could take a look at the photographs, too, after you've finished with Mr. Merriweather. Of course, be glad to, Lieutenant. Thank you. Howard Shirley, you don't believe I had anything to do with all this? Oh, no, Charles, no. Uh -huh. Of course not. Well, you're my lawyer. Get me out of this nonsense fast, would you? We will. You? We will. Now, don't worry about it. The police say the man was killed sometime between midnight and 4.30 a.m. You were at the club last night. I was playing cards with Dave McIntosh and the others. For closing time, I told them all that. Club closes at midnight. You went directly home. Didn't you? No. No? Well, I went to a bar that... Pink... Carriage. I, I, I was there till closing time there. It was 3 o'clock. Well, thank heaven the bartender there knows you. He can back you up. Did you tell that to the police? Why not? Howard. Ever since... Well, ever since Billy died, things haven't been the same between Ann and me. I... Oh, outward appearances they were. We, we try. Well, I always thought you two were the happiest couple in the world. We try to kid ourselves that we are. We both know what it is. It's an act. Both of us trying to believe it. What you're trying to tell me is you weren't alone at that bar last night. I wasn't alone after it closed either. And you were with this friend all the time? I was with her. What time did you get home? Six o'clock. Well, I've shocked you, haven't I, Howard? Oh, no, no, Charles. I'm a lawyer, not a judge of morals. 
Anyway, there's your alibi. Produce the girl, you walk right out of here. I'm not gonna produce that girl, Howard. You're not? And I want you to forget I ever brought this thing up. Charles, that girl is your alibi. Now, look, I've heard Anne enough. I'm not gonna hurt her anymore, and neither are you. Charles. Now, listen to me, please. I did not kill that man, Howard. But if it ever becomes necessary to tell about that other girl, I want to be the judge of that. All right. That's the way you want it. Lieutenant, I've never seen that man before in my life. Lieutenant. You, uh, you said uh, you thought the shooting took place near the Merriweather house. Well, how is it that Mrs. Merriweather didn't hear a shot? Well, she was out cold. Sleeping tablets. Checked with her doctor. She's been taking them for nearly three years. I live right next door. I didn't hear any. Well... The revolver was shoved up against the stomach of the victim when it was fired. That would have muffled some of the sound, and he might have used a silencer. Charles Merriweather drove a sedan to the club. He left it in the parking lot out back. It's dark there. If anybody wanted to get rid of a body... Yes, but uh, Mr. Merriweather drove his wife's station wagon to the club counselor. The sedan was in the garage all night. It still doesn't prove anything against my client. No, and neither would this. Might begin to make things look pretty bad. What's that? The key to the trunk of his car. He told the patrolman he'd lost it. He searched him later. It's in his watch pocket here. What did he say to that? That he lost it. He didn't know it was there. Sound like they very seldom make trousers with watch pockets like that anymore. Maybe he did just slip it in there. Forgot about it. So that's what he said. It's a little force, Mr. Yates. He knew it was there all the time. I'm afraid we've caught him in his first lie. Not a very good beginning, is it? by yourself tonight after what happened. Well, why don't you come stay with me? My housekeeper will make you comfortable. No, I, I'm all right. I, I've that dog Charles gave me. A... Yes, but... Howard, you're very dear to Charles and me. And I know that you feel friendly towards us. Sure, there's a better word than friendly. Then you won't lie to me. I mean, you won't soften anything for me. Charles is going to be all right. What would I do without you?
that a man, even a glimpse? No. I went into the bedroom. He was hiding there. He hit me from behind. All right, that settles it. You're coming over and stay with my housekeeper and me. I, I, I need some things. In the morning, you're not going to spend another second in this house tonight. Come on. Don't you see, Lieutenant? Now, whoever killed that man stuffed the body in the back of the car, came back last night and tried to kill Ann. Yes, I know. I talked to Mrs. Merriweather. Yes. Well, well, doesn't that point suspicion away from Charles? Why? Could have been an accomplice. An accomplice of all? What would Charles be doing with an accomplice? We still haven't found the murder weapon, Mr. Yates. We think it's around here somewhere. And somebody might come back for it before we find it. Excuse me. Anything yet, Sergeant? I thought I'd go in for a cup of coffee, Lieutenant. Would you care to join me? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Excuse me. Well, what is it, Lieutenant? Howard, was that Lieutenant Gideon? Yes. Why didn't he come in? I don't know. Uh, hold it, boys. Pour it out. That's right, pour it out. It's my gun, but I didn't use it. I did not kill that man. Stop lying to me. I'm not lying to you. The body was in your car. You lied about the trunk key. It was in your pocket all the time. And for the millionth time, I don't know how it got there. This is your gun. I didn't use it. You killed him. You dumped the gun in the garbage knowing it would be picked up in the morning. Then you put the body in your car and you took it out in the country to dump it on one of your sales trips. No, 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 no. Lieutenant, my client doesn't have to answer all these questions. I'll answer any questions he can ask. I'm telling you the truth. All right. So where did you go when you left your club at midnight? I went to a bar until 3 o'clock. The pink carriage, after that? I had too much to drink of. I went back to my car and I, I, I slept it off. I got home about 6. Unfortunately, nobody saw you in your car during that time. Lieutenant, may I speak with my client alone? All right, use that room. So. Charles, you're going to have to produce that girl immediately. They're going to indict you for murder, Charles. All right. Got a pencil of paper? Yes. Give her this note. She'll answer your questions. Or will she back you up? I hope so. All right, I'll, 
I'll stop by and see her as soon as I drop Ann at home. I want to thank you for being so good to Ann. You're a real friend. Yeah. Officer, we're through. Oh, Mr. Yates, would you mind taking a look at these? Of course. Sir. I think we've got the victim pegged. His name is Jake Harbor. Tout, bookie, petty thief. Charles wouldn't associate with anyone like that, would he, Ann? Message from a friend of yours. All right. Come in. Thank you. Sit down. Thanks. It says here you're Charlie's lawyer, Howard Yates. Yes, that's right. How well do you know Charlie, Mr. Yates? Quite well. We're next-door neighbors. Then I guess you know that wife of his, too. Yes, they're both very close friends of mine. You find out who the dead man is yet? Yes. His name is Jake Harbour. Just a small-time hoodlum. Did uh, you ever hear of him? No. I wonder what Charlie was doing running around with that body in his car trunk. And Charles wonders, too, as do the police. The important thing now is to find out who killed him. And unless Mr. Merriweather has an airtight alibi for the period from 3 to 6 a.m. Tuesday morning, he's going to be in trouble, very serious trouble. Well, if that's all the police want to know, Charlie's troubles are over. He was with me. Miss Grant, would you tell that to the police? Why not? It happens to be the truth. I, I can't tell you how relieved I am. You, you've no idea. Now, thanks to you, it's, it's all over. Well, I think it calls for a drink. Care for one? Yes, thank you. Would. This all right? Fine. On the rocks, please. Of course, it's too bad Mrs. Merriweather's going to have to find out. But I guess it really doesn't matter. Charlie's been wanting to tell her off for a long time. Ever since she killed her little boy. That was an accident, Miss Grant. A terrible, tragic accident. Oh, sure. Sure. You don't know how crazy Charlie was about that kid, though. I'll have to get some ice. It'll just take a minute. Oh, well, may I help you? Oh, no. You just make yourself at home and relax. Charlie's going to be all right. Yes, thanks to you. Virginia Grant knew Harbor Charles must have known him, too. Is she pretty, Howard? Oh, Anne, Anne. Well, at least it all explains one thing. Huh? What's that? I went back to my house this afternoon to start putting some things together. In Charles' closet behind his golf things, I found his savings account book. He must have hidden it there. And? Charles made a rather... Large withdrawal Monday afternoon. It was your anniversary, Anne. He wanted to buy you some gifts, the dog, take you out to dinner that night. He took out $3,000. Suppose he gave it to her. 
Or to harbor. Why? I don't know. Gambling debts, maybe. Monday draws the money out of the bank. Tuesday before dawn, Jake Harbor is killed. Both Charles and Virginia Grant lie about knowing Jake Harbor. Every move I make to help him just seems to get him deeper into this thing. I... I want to believe he's innocent. I know he's innocent, and yet... Howard, please. Please find a way to help him. I've hired a private investigator, Ann. One of the best. And we're going to get at the truth, no matter how Charles tries to cover it up with lies. <laughs> Thanks for coming over. I came as soon as I could. I didn't mean to trouble you. It was, I didn't think it was wise for me to come to your office. Did you know that the police were watching it? Why not? Well, it's just routine. Would you like some coffee? No, no, no. Well, sit down, please. Thank you. I ran down a few facts on Jake Harbor. Enough to interest you, I think. I say them. Virginia Grant used to date him. When your client started making gambling bets through him, Harbor introduced Meriwether to the girl. They all became very close friends, all three of them. How do you know that? It wasn't that hard to find out, Mr. Yates. You know, in my line of work, you, you got to get to know people, people you can buy, like bartenders, waiters, doormen. <laughs> Unfortunately, so do the police. What do you mean by that? I'm afraid you made a terrible mistake. In what way? You should never have made Virginia Grant go to the police. She was my client's alibi, the only chance to save him. You've practically hanged your client by making Virginia Grant talk. Gideon's already run a check on her. And he's questioned everybody that knows her. And? and they know everything I know, probably more. He's already checked on Harbor's bank account. He deposited $3,000 Monday afternoon, 10 minutes before the bank closed. I'm afraid nobody's going to believe you, Miss Grant's story. I've got to believe it. Considering the kind of woman she is, the jury's going to be prejudiced against your client. You were hired to find evidence that would make them believe her. Oh, really? Evidently, you haven't read the evening paper. <laughs> I've been talking to Lieutenant Gideon. He told me the DA's office is proceeding along two lines. One is you killed Jake Harbor to cover up a big gambling debt. The other is you killed him because he was blackmailing you, threatening to go to Ann about Virginia Grant. Now, which was it? Well, now, you believe I killed him too, don't you, Howard? I don't know what to believe. There was a Charles Merriweather I knew and respected. Now, this other person I'm finding out about, this Stranger, lying, sordid. You want to give up the case, Howard? I've been wanting to talk to you about that, Charles. I'm getting in this thing over my head. I... I think for your own good, you better get yourself another lawyer. Howard. Look at me, will you please, Howard? Please, please look at me. Howard, I didn't kill that man. I don't know who did. I didn't put his body in my car trunk. I didn't know that key was in my watch pocket. Now, that's the truth, Howard. You believe me? I don't know. Everything tells me I shouldn't. Yet I... Yes, Charles. I do believe you're telling the truth. Then I want you to go on being my lawyer. After this is all over, Ann will probably walk out on me, and I don't blame him. 
You're probably the only friend I have left, Howard. Don't you walk out on me, too. All right, Charles. I'll do everything humanly possible to get you out of this, but you've got to tell the truth. Nothing but that. Whatever happens, we can't compromise or they're going to trip us up. Now, you've got to admit the gambling debts. You've got to admit you knew Jake Harbour. All right. Why? Why, Charles, didn't you tell me this right from the start? Because admitting I knew Jake Harbour would lead to Virginia Grant, I wanted to spare my wife that. Shortly before the murder, you withdrew $3,000 from your bank account. The next day, Jake Harbour deposited $3,000 in his account at his bank. You don't call that losing heavily? All right, all right, I owe the money. Then you lied. I lied, but I didn't kill him. Lies, lies, lies. Your every story has been a tissue of lies. You and Miss Grant wanted to get rid of Jake Harbour. You lured him to your home knowing your wife was in a deep, drugged sleep, and there you shot him. I didn't kill him, I tell you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in all my years facing the accused, there has never been a more clear-cut case of murder. The state asks, no, it demands the death penalty. But I didn't kill him, I tell you. I'm innocent. Before God, I'm innocent. <laughs> Lieutenant Gideon, of all people. Hello, Yates. Long time. Merry Christmas. Thanks. Same to you. Come on in, sit down. Let me take your coat. Oh, thank you. Am I, uh, am I interrupting anything? Oh, no, I'm just starting to dress the tree, that's all, you know. Come on in, sit down. Thank you. Hey, can I fix you a little hot toddy? Yeah, it might be very nice, freezing out. Uh, go on with whatever you're doing. I can't stay long. Gotta meet my wife downtown. Shopping. <laughs> I know what you mean, that last minute stuff, huh? Oh, hey, I'll get outside that. A little cinnamon, sir? Yes, thank you. Well, that's a nice surprise, Lieutenant. It's been some time, hmm? Tell me, is this a social call or official? Oh, yes. It's quite social, quite social. About the uh, Merriweather case. Well, that's over and done with a long time ago, Lieutenant. It's not very. Pleasant to look back and remember how one failed a friend. Well, you tried your very best. I, uh, I went up to Bradford this morning to the Woman's State Reformatory. Oh, yes? See Virginia Grant. Remember her? How could I forget her? Been very ill. A couple of days ago, they put her in an oxygen tent. She knew she was going to die, so she, she asked to see me. Oh, what for? Tell me the truth about the Merriweather case. The truth? You mean she was lying when she alibied for Charles? Oh, no, no, no. He was with her that night, just as she said. Well, then what was it? Charles Merriweather didn't kill Jay Carver. Good heavens, then Charles really was innocent. Well, not quite. Yeah, but you just said. Yeah, I know. He didn't kill Harbor, but he was guilty of a murder. At least he was implicated. Lieutenant, I, I'm sorry, I'm just completely confused. If Charles didn't do it, what about all those lies he told? Who, who did really kill Jake Harbour? Well, maybe I better tell you in sequence. 
I suppose you know that somebody made an attempt on Anne Merriweather's life by turning on the gas. Yes, I knew that. Well, then you must also know that their marriage was on the rocks. Oh, well, they kept up public appearances, but actually he hated her for killing their little boy. And you mean it was Charles who tried to kill her? No, no, he didn't do it. But he wanted her dead. You see, he'd asked for a divorce and she refused. So he arranged it with Virginia Grant, and it was she who disguised herself as a man, broke in, and turned on the gas. Good heavens. <laughs> it didn't work, as you know. So Merriweather was shocked when he got home on his anniversary to find his wife still alive. Then she asked for a watchdog, and that fitted in very neatly, because Charles Merriweather gave her Ginny Grant's dog. By now, Charles and Ginny decided that they needed a professional killer. So they hired Jake Harbour for $3,000. Now, that's when Charles withdrew the money from the bank. Yes, and why he couldn't explain the withdrawal. Now, Charles planned his alibi first at the club, then at the pink carriage, while Harbour went next door to the Merriweather house to kill Mrs. Merriweather. Yeah, well, well, then what happened? How did Harbour get killed? Well, there was one flaw in their plan. You see, Anne Merriweather suspected that her husband was planning to kill her. So she didn't take the sleeping tablets. She hadn't been taking them for weeks, only pretending. So that when Harbor broke in, she was ready for him. Now, Harbor must have attacked her when she discovered him, so Anne had to kill him with Charles's gun. And it was self-defense. She killed him in self-defense. Yeah, she did it all right. She could have gotten off on self-defense, but there was one thing that she wanted much more than that. She wanted revenge. And her husband had left himself completely vulnerable. So. She put Harbor's body in the trunk of Charles's car and put the key in his watch pocket. Yeah. But then, Lieutenant, who was the person that attacked her in her bedroom? Jenny again, disguised as a man. You see, she came back to find the gun before we did, but Anne had already planted it in the garbage so it would look as if Charles had hidden it there. That's incredible, Lieutenant. It's incredible. Well, Charles couldn't tell the truth because it would have implicated him and Ginny. Right up to the end, he kept hoping that something would happen, but nothing did. All that while, she just sat there and kept her mouth shut and let me and the law destroy Charles. That was her revenge, Mr. Yates. And it was exquisite. Howard! Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I didn't realize you had company. You remember Lieutenant Gideon, darling? Lieutenant, this is my wife, Anne. Congratulations. And a Merry Christmas.